So when I say transformations in a plane, what I mean is how can I manipulate an equation by adding, subtracting, multiplying quantities in certain ways to change the graph? So I want to be able to um, move a graph up or down or left or right, make it wider or thinner. If it's a parabola, I want to reflect it through the x-axis. And I can do all of that within the equation. So let's first look at the most basic one, the easiest one to see. And that is to translate something, which means to move, uh, to shift, is to translate, to just like move it around a plane. I'm translating my piece of paper. Um, and let's go with up and down, because that's the first, that's the easiest one. Okay, and what you do is you take your function rule, whatever it is, and you add on whatever you want to, however you want to move the graph. Um, so if I want to look at an example, and uh, you can test these out on the calculator, which is what I'm going to do. Um, let's say I have my original function is y equals 3x squared. So my function rule is basically 3x squared. And so I can take 3x squared, and if I add 5 to it, what's it going to do? It's going to shift all of the points up 5. So if I look at my original y equals 3x squared, and then I make the version 3x squared plus 5, this graph is going to graph second, and it better be just shifted up 5 units. And let's check. And uh, yes, it is. It's just shifted up 5 units. So this moved the graph up 5. So if adding 5 moves the graph uh, up 5, then if I subtract something from it, like, uh, I don't know, a 3, this should move the graph down 3. And if I'm not sure, what a transformation does, then I can just experiment using my calculator because it'll graph things really quickly for me as opposed to by hand, which takes forever. And so I can explore things like this and this better move it down three. And it does, yes. So if I want to translate a graph up or down, if I want to move it up, I add something. If I want to move it down, I subtract something. And it's at the end of the rule. And this doesn't just work for quadratics. It'll work for linears, too. You take whatever the rule is. At the very end of the rule, you just tack on a plus or minus, and it's going to shift the whole graph up or down. And that doesn't matter if it's linear, quadratic, exponential. Um, later on, we're going to learn about, or you're going to learn about sine graphs. And it works for all of them. OK. So now, another translation is the left or right translation. And this is a little bit harder to, to grasp in the beginning um, because you don't tack anything on at the end. You don't, add the, you don't add it on in the end. You have to add it inside the rule because what happens is, is you want to shift the graph left or right, which means you have to change where, where things are zero. And so we're going to stick with the original um, of y equals 3x squared. And so when, what this means is you're going to replace the x with something inside of parentheses um, that are um, that have a plus or minus in it. So I, it's just like substituting in. Like if I were to substitute in a 4 into that function, I'm going to put the 4 in parentheses and put the 3 and the 2 on the, on the outside just like before. But now I'm going to put x minus something. So it's an expression putting, being plugged into an expression. So let's say x minus 4. Okay, and I want to see what that does. So I replace the x with an x minus 4, and I'm going to see what happens to the graph. So I go back to my graphing calculator, and I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to clear this one off. 3, open up some parentheses, x minus 4, and this is going to shift the graph. Now I have to determine if it's going to shift it left or right. So let's graph it and see. There's the original, and there's the shifted version, and it moved it to the right four spots. To the right four. And I want to figure out why that's doing that. Well, if I look at the 0, meaning where y is 0 here, y is 0 in the original when x is 0. But where is y 0 here? Well, if I, well, if I want to make this, this thing 0, what value of x do I use to make this whole expression be 0? Well, it's x equals 4. So it shifted the 0 in that direction. And that's why it's to the right 4. Well, if a subtracting a number gives me a, a shift to the right, then my instinct tells me, well, that adding something is going to shift it to the left. And in this case, seven spots. So let's just confirm it does that. And so I go down, and I change that minus 4 to a plus 7. And I'm going to graph it. It's going to graph the original first. And now it's going to, oh, 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 it shifted over 7. That's because the 0 changed. What makes this thing 0 now is negative 7. And that's why it hits there at negative 7. And this one, this way, um, replacing the, the x part of the rule with an x minus or an x plus will shift anything left or right. That's true for linear, exponential, quadratic, 
um, any of the more exotic functions you learn later on in your math careers, this will move it left or right. Um, so now we have two more, and the reflection is the next one we're going to look at. And this is a general, general reflection through the x-axis. Okay, so for things like a parabola, it means I want to flip it upside down or turn it back right side up. And for things like a line, when I reflect them through the x-axis, the line changes from being decreasing to being increasing or vice versa. And this translation is take the function rule and make the opposite of it. So once again, I go with the original, y equals 3x squared. And the original is a happy face parabola. So if I want to switch it to make it a frowny face parabola, all I have to do is change all the positive values and make them negative by multiplying the entire rule by negative 1. So if I multiply the entire rule by negative 1, I'm going to get an upside down uh, version of the graph, or a graph that's been reflected through the x-axis. So I confirm by graphing, and it better be upside down, and it is. So this is going to reflect it through the x-axis. And for a parabola, it'll change it from happy to sad, for an exponential, it'll change the asymptote from being a maximum or a minimum. And for lines, it changes it from being increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing. All right. Now the last transformation we look at are the dilations. And a dilation in a function is to you know, make it skinnier or wider if it's a parabola or an ex absolute value. And for a line, it means make it steeper or less steep. Okay, so I'm going to actually make that distinction. So it's the steepness of a line that's changing, and it's the width of the parabola. And we don't really look at exponentials for dilations. We only look at you know linears and, and quadratics. And here is what you do. You take a uh, some constant, and you multiply it by your function rule. It's the entire function rule that gets multiplied by a. So if I look at the original, y equals 3x squared. And if I take y equals 3x squared and I multiply it by something like 2, then that's going to change the width of my parabola. So I'm going to go down here and change this to a 2 times the 3x squared. And it's going to change the width. Once again, it's going to graph the original first. And then it's going to graph the change, trans transformed one. And it's thinner. So this made the graph thinner. So my instinct is telling me that if I multiply it by a fraction, it's going to make it wider. Now let's confirm. And once again, you know, during a test or something, if you forget, you can always use your graphing calculator to experiment. So I'm going to change the uh, 2 to a 0.5 um, times x squared, because 0.5 is equivalent to uh, a half. And I graph it, and it better make it wider. There's the original. And there's the wider version. So this is wider. And the rule is that a, and we don't care about the sine of a. We just care about the absolute value or the magnitude of a. Um, so for a parabola, we're going to think of this in terms of width. So the absolute value of a, because we don't care about the sine, um, if it's greater than 1, it's going to make us a thinner parabola. And if I look at it in terms of linear, it's going to make a steeper line. Now, if the absolute value of a is between 0 and 1, it has to be between 0 and 1, because if you multiply it by 0, you have no function left. And if you multiply it by 1, you get the exact same function. Uh, you're going to get a wider parabola or a uh, less steep line. And remember, it's the absolute value because the sine tells us a reflection through the x-axis. So it's going to change from happy to sad or vice versa and uh, increasing to decreasing or, or vice versa. And that's how you uh, transform a graph in a plane by manipulating the equation.